We're starting off in the northern portion of the district, just outside Paso Robles, where we're going to have one of the community's leading experts show us what goes on behind the scenes in one of the largest industries right here in our backyard. Steve Lohr with J. Lohr Vineyards and Wines is going to help us with this conversation and explain how we go from something like this, uh, these wonderful, wonderful, beautiful grapes, uh, to a finished product, one of the most uh, treasured wines uh, known uh, across the country uh, that's produced by J. Lohr. Oh, thanks, Sam. Well, glad to have you here at our uh, vineyard and winery today. What you're seeing here today is one of our older vineyards that we mm -hmm. have now taken out. Oh, and okay. we are replanting it. And this is kind of an interesting little orientation that we're doing here in that back in the 70s, 80s, and even early 90s, most vine rows were planted east-west. Okay. And then the uh, trend in the mid to late 90s was to plant vine rows north-south. The idea was that if vine rows are planted north-south, then you get the morning sun. Right. Perfectly symmetric. Exactly. Sort of optimization of the total, total solar radiation. You've got it. But maybe in Paso Robles, you don't want to optimize solar radiation. Not in the afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> Gets a little warm here. Okay. When it's 100 or 105 degrees in, in August, uh, that gets to be a little hot. So in anticipation of global warming, uh, one of the things we're doing now is planting our new vineyards with a northeast-southwest mm -hmm. orientation so that you get more of the cool morning light and less of the warm afternoon sun. I say it makes a lot of sense. And when we plant a vine, uh, we typically won't expect a crop for oh, roughly two and a half years. Two and a half years. Yeah, and that's the first crop. That'll be just a very small crop. It takes about five years or so for the vine to get fully into production. It's quite an investment of time and effort before you really know that you've got something that's starting to pay you dividends. This is a business of delayed gratification. Delayed gratification. <laughs> Steve, here we are. After all the hard work, uh, we now have mature vines before us. I think you just said these are approximately 18 years old, and so they've been producing since about year five. Tell me, wh what do we have here? We, I guess we've got some magnificent uh, grapes, which are now going into award-winning mm -hmm. bottles of wine. That's right, that's right. This is part of our Hilltop Vineyard, Sam, and this is where we make our very best Cabernet. Oh, how exciting. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, whereas many of our vines are trained with cordons, where essentially we'll have the cordon, which is like a big limb going out on the just, side. Just like horizontally. It comes up and then it T-bones out. Exactly. Okay. Here, this is a good example of a cane pruned vine. And a cane pruned vine is where you have this little head in through here, and then you have these individual canes coming oh, off at I various see. points. I see. And the advantage here is you get your clusters spaced out at different levels. Some are lower like this, some are higher, so you get more exposure to light. Maybe we can see how you actually harvest you know, the, the grapes off the vine, how that occurs. Mm -hmm. In through this area, this will be all hand harvested, okay. but we also do some machine harvesting, which we'll take a look at in some of our other vineyards nearby Fantastic. here. Fantastic. Well, let's, let's take a look. Can you tell me, how is this even possible? I mean, yeah. it looks so delicate. How can you be harvesting with a machine? That's right. Well, what happens is that harvester straddles the row, goes right over the right row. Right over the top of it. And then it has a series of fiberglass rods which vibrate back and forth. What's so nice about that harvester is as those rods vibrate, only the ripe fruit falls off. Brilliant. Then it goes down through a series of conveyors and up into the hopper there. So we can take that to the winery. So what we've done uh, as we took those grapes from the field, put them into the hopper, which we just looked at outside. That's where we take most of our grapes. Uh, but then there's also another process, which we call berry sorting. And with berry sorting, we have a very special machine, or one of only a few wineries in the country that have it, where instead of sorting individual clusters, we actually sort individual berries. And that way, only the ripest berries get through. Those berries that are either overripe, in other words, raisined, or underripe, they get cut out by an air knife that separates them. So we have two piles. One um, pile that has the perfectly ripe grapes, and then another pile that has the not-so-ripe grapes. From there, 
we uh, send the grapes into fermentation tanks. Now, for red grapes, we ferment in stainless steel tanks. And there we will ferment, oh, typically anywhere from 8 to 14 days, in some unusual circumstances even longer than that. And at various temperatures and such. So from there, then we come into the barrel room here. And we are surrounded right now by 26,000 oak barrels. So we spare no expense to um, properly age these grapes. And they will stay in barrel typically anywhere from 12 to 24, sometimes even 30 months in a combination of French and American oak, depending upon what program we're going for. Very impressive. I can hardly wait to see the final product. OK. Shall we? Let's go take a taste. Well, this has been a tremendous journey from the grape to the Glass? <laughs> OK. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> here's, here's a little Hilltop Cabernet for you. Fantastic. Oh, that's marvelous.